This has five. Five. This automatically has five solutions. Now, some of those solutions might repeat, and some might be imaginary. Three and four. Pardon? Three and four. Well, no. This has this has five solutions, but yeah. some of them might repeat themselves, and some of them might be imaginary. So it doesn't necessarily have five x-intercepts. Remember, there's a difference between those. Is that the three-dimensional three? We have an x, y, and a. Uh, if you have an x, y, and an i, you can include the imaginary solutions in the graph. But it was like this, and then there was one coming out like that. Yeah, but that didn't come up with polynomials. Uh -huh. Okay, but you know how if you look at an x to the fifth, you always had five solutions, but you often didn't care about them. What if this thing looked like this? Then you only cared about these three actual x-intercepts, right? Yeah. And those other two solutions were maybe imaginary. Um, so you didn't care about them. De Moivre's theorem is a little bit like that, but for numbers. Here it is. Okay? The theorem is oh. really short. An nth root has n solutions on the imaginary plane. An nth root has n solutions on the imaginary plane. If it's imaginary, why are we discussing it? <laughs> I should be saying the complex plane. That's a great point. Okay, on the complex plane. Um, has n solutions on the imaginary plane. Always. Um, the root is applied to the modulus. That's the distance of the radius. Okay? Wait, I have a question. How did we find five, there's five solutions? Oh, uh, we didn't. It's the fundamental theorem of algebra says there always are five solutions to a fifth degree polynomial. There's always okay. 27 solutions to a 27th degree polynomial. But not all of them have to work, right? Or not all of them have to work on the real, yeah, some of them can be imaginary, some of them can be repeated. Like x minus 5 can be the solution five times. Um, so that would be a line? No, that would be, we'll review polynomials before the final. Um, okay, the solutions <laughs> well, are in a circle evenly spaced. An nth root has n solutions on the imaginary plane. The root is applied to the modulus. The solutions are in a circle evenly spaced. This is 95% of what you need to know right here. The rest we'll do by example. For example, you guys, what were you guys taught the cube root of negative 8 should be? 2. Try negative 2. Oh, yeah, that 2. Negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative again gets you the negative. Cube root of negative 8 should be 2. Mm -hmm. Negative 2. I but just said I. Right. that. I. No, I only applies to even roots. Oh. Odd roots can go ahead and have negative answers. They also don't have pairs of answers. Okay? Now, let's go to the imaginary plane and let's make this more complicated than it needs to be. Um, so there's yay. now three solutions to it? There's now three solutions to it. Here's negative eight. One of those solutions is going to be the real one, negative two. The other two solutions are going to be on this circle with a radius of two. Wait, why are there two solutions? If you already have negative eight and negative two, shouldn't there only be one more solution? No, negative 8 is not a solution. This is the problem. This number has three different roots. Okay? The other two are evenly spaced on this circle away from this solution. So, I go 120 degrees up here, then another 120 degrees down here, and those are my other two solutions. But how do you not put them at 120? Because there's three of them. What's 120 divided by three? I just totally messed that up. What's 360 divided by 3? 120. 120. So they're going to be 120 degrees away from each other. Oh, okay. Uh, because, oh, okay. Now, if, I were taking the, if I were taking the 6th root, they'd be 60 degrees away from each okay, other. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I were taking the 12th root, they'd, be tw they'd all be 30 degrees away from each other. And then we have 12 solutions. Yes. Now, you can do a little geometry to figure out the other solutions in a case like this, but I'm going to try and give you a general formula, and then I'll go back and apply it to that one. Or Hold on, why can't it just be as easy as that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why do you care about Well, you might want to know. You, <laughs> you might want to know where these are. Well, no, but once you have negative <laughs> no, two, you're really not. Once you have negative two, you're good. 
Well, here's the thing is, okay, if we're on the imaginary plane, I'm going to want this in cis form, okay? In polar form. Why would you want it in that? Like, so, he has the answer right there. The cube root of negative 8, well, this isn't that hard. Okay, negative 2, remember. Okay, yeah, before I go on. Like, with the top point, can that be, like, 1, like, 150? Oh, you know what? You're counting. we got to go from standard form from this being 0 degrees here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, 150. Uh, this would actually only be, if it's 120 back from here, that would only be 60 degrees up. Uh, well, I was at rest estimating. No one like Yeah, anything. and then this is at 180 degrees, and then this one down here is at um, 300 degrees. Well, what, what, were, what were the start off? Would it be like, all of it would be negative 2? All of them would actually be positive 2, because it's absolute value from the origin. It's the uh, distance. So the three so points... So why like that? Um, well, what I would have to do is write the three points like 2 cis 180, 2 cis 60, and 2 cis 300. Well, those are the answers. And these would be the three Point. different roots of negative 8. Sorry, I know we probably already talked about this. I wasn't really listening. Um, okay. That's it, right? Uh, how, wait, why are they all 60 degrees away? They're all evenly spaced around a circle, and there's three of them. Absolutely. Okay. So they have to be 120 degrees away from each other. So is that in every case? They're, in every case, they have to be evenly spaced. So if I say, if I ask you for the 12th root of something, then you're going to get 12 of these, and they'll each be 30 degrees away from each other, because 12 times 30 gets you 360. Okay? And the answer. So this would be how you'd have to put the answer. There is a formula for it, which is the nth root of z, okay, is... The nth root of the radius, okay, times cis of theta divided by n. What is that? Wait, sorry, what is that again? Uh, no, no, Z? Yeah. No, no, what is, what are you doing right now? I'm taking a root of Z. <laughs> <All right. laughs> There's so many in my classes, but that's just what should, kids should just honestly ask. What are you doing right now? Um, I'm taking the nth root of the complex number in polar form, which I'm calling z, I take the nth root of the modulus, that's the distance from the origin, and I divide the root times the n, and there's a couple of formulae words. Um, you divide ways, the root by times the I'm sorry, n. divide the angle by the root. Okay? Okay, so hold on, hold on, I have a question. It's exact opposite of the multiplication, where of the exponents, excuse me, where we multiplied n times theta. It's the exact inverse of that. Yes? Okay, so basically, because we knew that Negative 2 was on the 180 line on the, yep. the graph or whatever. So then we know that, that once you have, um, so you divided 180 by 3 to get, wait, I don't understand how you went from 180 to 60 to 300. Okay, I knew one of the, I, this one I cheated a little bit, okay? I know that this one of the uh, answers to the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And I know that even on the imaginary plane, negative 8 is here and negative 2 is here. Uh -huh. Okay? So I knew that was one of my answers. Then I know the other two are evenly spaced around this circle. Right. And there's three of them. 3 times 120 gets me 360. Right. So that's why I knew they were 120 degrees away from each other. Oh. So from 180, I went back 120 and forward 120, and that got me these two. So oh, so basically and then I double check that these are 120 from each other also. So why don't you give us the one that you can't cheat? Yeah, let me give you one that you can't cheat, because if I don't start with a real number, you won't be able to do that. But if it starts with a number on the positive or negative x-axis, you can always get the real cube root and figure the rest from there. So, this basically is... This will get you the idea. Okay, now let's get to the process. This gets you your first one. Okay, and then you can count around the circle for your other ones. But it's not that bad. Let me find a good example from the book, because if I make one up where you can't cheat, Brandon, you know what happens when I make those up. Why well, don't I just disregard all the nasty words? <laughs> Keep dreaming. Dream of that day. Why don't we just build calculated computers to do it for us? We already have. We have, and, nobody, and people don't understand it well enough, so... Come on, give me a better example. Really, that's, that's not the only example they give. The book sucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. But it does, um... Okay. All right, find all, I was misreading one example, that's my fault. Find all complex roots of z equals complex, wait, let me give you a number, bless you. 
all complex fourth roots 